Tonight is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, 7 p.m. Uh, tonight I am sitting as the chair, Drew Delaney. Um, other board members are Bob Fitzgerald, um, Dave Anderson. Um, we also have our associate members who will be sitting in with us, uh, Judy Conroy, uh, Tim Hegeler, and Mark Major. Also, we have Patrick Cesne, which is the Community and Economic Development Director, and Stephen Natola, the Plan Reviewer and Permit Administrator. Um, the only case we have for us tonight is uh, case 2201, High Plain Holding. Um, and we can get rolling. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the Town of Walpole will hold a public hearing in the main meeting room of Walpole Town Hall on Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022 at 7 p.m. on application from High Plain Holding, LLC, case number 22-1. With respect to the property located at 173 High Plain Street, Walpole, Mass., within the Business Zoning District, this application is for a special permit under Section 5B13G of the Zoning Bylaws to allow for a three story, 10 unit mixed residential development within the Business Zoning District. Uh, would the applicant please come forward, identify themselves to the board, and explain what you are proposing or requesting? Mr. Chairman, Dan Merrickin with Legacy Engineering, here on behalf of the applicant. The applicant's here today, Anthony Monahan and Andrew Litchfield are here. They are the applicant. Uh, as you noted, we are here seeking a special permit to allow two residential floors on a commercial building in a business zoning district. I'm just gonna go through and present the project to you, give you some background, and then we have to answer any questions you may have. The site's located at 173 High Plain Street, Route 27. It's next to the apartment building on the corner of Washington and 27. There's an existing, in the current condition, there's an existing house, we run down. There's an old building in the back, driveway, gravel driveway in the back, the rest of this landscape area. Lots about 28,000 square feet. I wanna, I know the board members are familiar with this, but for the benefit of other people who are here, I just want to go through kind of the zoning condition of the site. Even though this property sits in what is predominantly a residential area, it is zoned business. This lot, the apartment lot, and the house lot to our left, as you look at it, are all three zoned business, which means single family residential uses aren't allowed. Uh, it's intended under the zoning bylaw for business uses. There's a whole host of business uses that are permitted in the business zone by right that don't require relief from the zoning board. Uh, what the applicant would like to do instead of building a 100% commercial building on the property is do a mixed use building. That is a condition that's allowed in the bylaw by special permit from the board. The first floor has to be commercial. And then if a special permit is allowed, the upper two floors can be residential. Uh, the first floor commercial use is allowed by right. The special permit is really just focused on whether or not the upper two floors could be residential instead of, say, commercial. Three-story commercial building is an allowed activity in the business zone, so it's basically like replacing two stories of commercial with two stories of residential units. We are proposing 10 units, uh, five on each floor. We're proposing to demolish the existing structure the bylaw requires the new building to be forward on the site. It has to be within, I think, 15 and 25 feet of the site. We're right around 16 or 17 feet. The bylaw wants to see parking along the side and the rear of the building, which is what we are proposing. So we're proposing a building with a footprint of about 5,300 square feet. Sitting in the front right-hand corner of the site, in front will be walkways and landscaping. There'll be a driveway on the left side of the site that you're looking at on the high side. In out driveway that will come in, we'll have parking along the side and parking in the rear. Parking, the bylaw actually stipulates that for a mixed use building, you're supposed to provide the number of spaces needed for the residential units and the minimum number of spaces needed for the commercial units, which is exactly what we've proposed. Uh, 31 spaces, which is basically what the bylaw says you need to do for a mixed use building. And those spaces, that I, as I indicated, are situated along the left side of the building and then in the rear of the building. From 
the standpoint of architecture, we submitted some plans and we prepared a rendering. And basically, show you here. rather than building, you know, a three-story kind of commercially building, the applicant is uh, obviously aware that there are a lot of residences in the neighborhood and is proposing a building that looks very similar to a residential structure. It'll have clapboard and shingle style siding. It will be trimmed out like a residential structure. The front massing has been specifically designed to look like not three stories. It's been specifically designed to look like two and a half stories, but a third floor is basically built into the roof line. The structure is 35 feet tall. Uh, you're allowed to be up to 40 feet tall, so it's less than what's uh, permitted in the district. And that height is very similar to uh, the height of say a colonial style house from the top of the, the roof line to the ground 35 feet is pretty typical for a colonial style house so in terms of massing the applicant's gone to great care to kind of make sure that it fits in the neighborhood as best as it can given the fact that it's in a business zoning district the front you'll notice also that the front facade is not very wide so in terms of its width and height, the front facing portion of the structure is going to kind of feel like it's in a residential area. Uh, and that was done very specifically. What else? Let's see. Let's talk a little bit about lighting. Um, we're keeping lighting to a minimum. We are proposing two light poles in the back. They will face towards the streets. They are not very high. I think they're 12 feet. They're full cutoff fixtures, which means the light source is tucked up in the cabinet of the head. Um, it's facing directly down. It doesn't shine out. There'll be some wall packs in the building, which are the same design. Full cutoff, facing down only, not out. We provided a photometrics analysis demonstrating that we're not going to be illuminating any adjacent, adjacent properties. Talk a little bit about landscaping. I know that Patrick has required, requested some additional information on landscaping, which we will provide. But what we're intending is that the front will be a planted area. Um, you know, it'll kind of look like the, a planting bed in front of a house. We'll have a walkway to the front door, set of stairs down to the sidewalk, and then we have a residential zoning line on our rear line. So the properties left and right are zone business, but the properties to the rear are in a, a residential zone. So the bylaw requires us to provide a 26 foot buffer, a landscape buffer to those properties, which we're doing. Um, there's in the middle of that area, there's some good vegetation, which we're gonna leave, trees and lower canopy stuff. Uh, to the east and west in the corners, it gets a little thin. So we're proposing to do some plantings there. Uh, on the uh, on this side would be a little bit of a mounded bed with two rows of giant green giant arborvitaes. If you guys know where the Russian School of Math is, uh, used to be the Kentucky Fried Chicken. If you look behind that building, you're going to see these really tall, really thick trees. That's what we're proposing to plant there. They're very dense; they grow very quickly. And we put some of those again in the corner as well, uh, just to basically keep up this buffer some separation between us and those homes. We are also proposing to install a new stockade fence. Basically, along the left side, there's existing fencing across the back. So along the left and right side, we would propose to install stockade fencing, just for some screening and separation. Utilities are pretty straightforward. We're on municipal water and sewer. Uh, we have proposed a stormwater management system, which will be under the parking lot. Uh, that's all been submitted to the planning board as part of site plan review and the town engineer uh, is in the process of reviewing that. As far as dimensional requirements are, everything we're proposing here complies with the bylaw. Uh, our lot complies with the bylaw for a use in the business zone. Our structure meets all the setback requirements. Our structure's coverage is only half of what's permitted. We're at about 19% structure coverage. We're allowed 40%. Uh, our impervious coverage is what the bylaw allows for, which is 70%. The other 30% is open space, green space. So that's the overview. Um, we think that in the context of the fact that this is a business zone, that this is a better use for the site than what the business zoning bylaw traditionally contemplates, which is 100% commercial activity. 
given that we're in a neighborhood here, um, we think that a mixed use is a great use for this site. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about it. <clears throat> are there any board members with questions? Could you just speak a little bit about the um, sort of the pedestrian entrance to the commercial space versus the residential space, whether that's going to be common or just sort of pedestrian and vehicular circulation on the site? Well, they're going to be separate. I mean, presently we have our residential access on the side of the building. We contemplated putting our commercial access on the front, but the building inspectors indicated that we're going to have to have a uh, commercial access on the side of the building because it needs to be in proximity to our uh, accessible parking spaces. So they will be separate, um, but I th we're going to have, you know, we're probably going to have commercial access front and side and then residential access. That's the plan for now. And there was concern, I think, by the, by the town engineer about uh, turning left out of the uh, the parking lot. Yeah, uh, I saw that, and I t I chatted with him today. Um, you know, we all know this intersection; it gets busy during rush hour. There's no question about it. Uh, I was out there this morning looking at it, and you definitely can take a left turn out of that property. Uh, you might have to wait a little while. Uh, if the board is inclined to require a sign that says no left turn during certain hours, we're amenable to that. Um, we don't have a problem with that. But I, I do think that the access is doable. I specifically for position the driveway here so it can be as far away from the intersection as mm -hmm. humanly possible. <laughs> so, you know, we put it in the best place we could um, for the intersection. Yep. How are you doing? What's um, Dave Anderson? Hi. What is the proposed commercial use for the first floor there? I know that the market may dictate some of that, but just how to carry out office space, uh, retail, like what is? So we don't know. Obviously, um, we think that it will likely end up being some kind of office space. Um, you know, there's not there's not a ton of parking that they dedicated to the commercial use. So that's going to kind of drive what kind of tenant ends up in there. It's quite likely that it could be an engineer's office or an accountant's office or something. That's a, a very likely tenant for those spaces. And given the allowed use being business, a buy right project for a business use there, are we saying or are you saying that it would be the same size building but all business commercial use? Or are you saying? Yeah, we could build this building. Exactly, like this 100% commercial, and it would it could look the same. It could also look different. I mean, there's there's a bunch of things you can do by right in the business zone, restaurants and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, you from could, a dimensional standpoint, I mean, yeah, height, setbacks, size, etc. Yeah, yeah. The bylaw allows for two stories, 40 foot height, allows for twice the the footprint coverage that we're providing for. So yeah, you build something comparable in size and configuration as a 100% commercial. I write. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Um, I just have a couple of housekeeping issues with the application. I had um, emailed Patrick yesterday. There's a lot of different names on these sets of plans. There's Penny something, and then there's your organization. And well, I'm the high engineer, plane. but you're the engineer. Not, I mean, you're high plane high holdings. Plane yeah, holdings. Okay. the reason the architect will say penny is because one of the principals uh, commissioned that uh, initial concept prior to them creating a business entity for this use. We can correct that and submit a revised set. That okay, I, I, that that would make me feel better. Um, just so that all the names are the same and the, the all the parties are identified and all that sure. stuff. Okay. Um, question on both sets of plans. You mentioned a footprint of 5340, which is on your on one set of plans. And then there's another number, net space 4425. So twice the commercial foot footprint. Is that what you have upstairs? And I'd like to see that on both sets of plans because that's what we look for. So can you explain the math? Because I'm not going to do two sets of math. Which, I don't know what the one? architect. My, my, my dimension is basically the footprint of the building, and that's the growth floor area structure. So okay. 
Um, I will clarify what the architect's figure is, and we'll get we'll get a clarification to you on it. Okay, because if I'm correct, we only would allow twice the footprint. You are the top two floors. Residential use is allowed to occupy up to 200 percent of the gross floor area of the commercial. Space. Okay, you're correct. So we'll provide the, those numbers to you. Okay, okay, that's good. Um, and there were some comments from the fire and Mr. Chairman. I don't know if you're going to go yeah, into that. Yeah, I was. I, okay. I, I'll, I'll yield. Okay. No, go ahead. I won't, I won't. So we have a few different uh, department letters here. Um, <clears throat> first one is from the Walpole Fire Department. Has reviewed the plans and application for the above noted location. We have the following preliminary comments to offer to the board. A uh, turning radius document needs to be submitted per the Massachusetts State Fire Code 527 CMR 1 utilizing Walpole Fire Department's turning radius documentation. Two, the plan submitted lack an approved turnaround allowing unobstructed access in, into and out of the parking area for the Walpole Fire apparatus. Three, the plan submitted to the Fire Department do not indicate the proposed location for the following. Fire Department connection, FDC. Sprinkler, sprinkler room and standpipes. Plans need to be submitted denoting the aforementioned uh, items in order for the department to fully evaluate the scope and impact of the project on the fire department. Uh, zoning board, uh, Board of Health. Board of Health at its February 1st, 2022 meeting voted unanimously that they have no comments at this time. Uh, the building commissioner uh, per the walpole demolition delay bylaw the walpole historic historical commission held a meeting on october 7th 2021 at 6 30 p.m and voted 300 in favor of this motion the commission determines that the single family structure at 173 high plain street is not architecturally and or historically significant per the town of walpole's demolition delay bylaw chapter 349 copy of this decision a motion will be uploaded to the online permit for this property <clears throat> uh, from the Carl Boldoff the town engineer we have received the following nine sheet 2436 plan titled 173 High Plain Street Walpole Mass site plan dated December 20 2021 Prepared for High Plain Holdings LLC, prepared by Legacy Engineering of Millis, Massachusetts. A two page project narrative to the zoning board from Dan Merkin, PE of Legacy Engineering, dated January 3rd, 2022. Zoning application, architectural plans, rendering, and various other application materials. We offer the following comments Project plan submission is through and thorough and complete. The proposed development appears to comply with applicable zoning requirements. We will provide site plan review comments to the planning board. However, we see one use related issue for the zoning board to consider, which is noted as follows. The proposed project driveway will currently allow traffic to exit onto High Plains Street, Route 27 in either direction. Traffic exiting to the left will cross the double yellow line and or the pavement marking Gore area and enter the weaving zone where traffic splits into two lanes for the traffic signal at Washington Street. This is generally not allowed. The board could require a traffic assessment for this issue and or limit access to the right in and out. The input of Walpole Police Department should be considered for this issue. A letter from Patrick Chesney, Director of Community and Economic Development. The Office of the Community and Economic Development was provided with an application for the special permit under Zoning Bylaws 5B13G, dated 1-3-2022. A butters list, copies of a proposed building rendering, copies of proposed floor plans and architectural plans titled 173 High Plain Street, Walpole, Mass, dated 9-27-2021, with a revision date of 12-13-2021 prepared by Context Architecture and a nine sheet plan set titled 173 High Plain Street, Walpole, Mass. Site plan. 
The plan set was prepared by Legacy Engineering, LLC of 730 Main Street, Suite 2C, Millis, Mass. 02054. The plan is set. The plan set is dated December 20th, 2021. From this provided information, I offer the following comments. Department review meeting. On January 19th, 2022, a department review meeting was held for the proposed project in attendance from municipal departments were representatives from town administration, police, DPW, engineering, fire, water, and health, sewer and water, excuse me, health, building, and community development. In attendance from the applicant side was the project en engineer, architect, and applicant. An overview of the proposed project and initial comments were discussed. Section 5G, buffer zones. The applicant provides a 26 foot buffer between their business B zone property and the adjacent residential BRB zone property to the rear of the lot. This distance complies with the requirements of 5G11. The inclusion of two planting areas of evergreen trees, green, giant, arborvitae, or similar, at six foot to eight foot minimum height is compliant with sections 5G13 and 5G14. Section 8, parking regulations. Applicant proposes 31 parking spaces included in two, include two handicapped spaces. The parking code for the use under five, section 5B13G is parking code 1 under section 831 of the zoning bylaw, which designates two parking spaces for each residential unit on the premises. Being that there are 10 proposed dwelling units for the development, 20 parking spaces for the site's residential development is required according to the zoning bylaw. The, so, the site proposed a first floor commercial use encompassing a gross floor of 5,340 square feet. The applicant is proposing parking spaces of one space per 500 square feet of gross floor area, which is compliant with the minimum stands found in parking code 4 of section 831 of the zoning bylaws. This equates to 11 parking spaces. Parking code 4 of section 831 also proposed a maximum parking count of one space per 200 square feet of gross floor area, which is why the total required parking space for the site ranges from 31 spaces to 47 spaces. By the applicant proposing 31 total parking spaces, they meet the minimum threshold allowed for the use in their proposed building size. This applicant also proposes two handicapped spaces on site, which complies with the town's general bylaw, section 537-2, which effectively states that in publicly accessible sites, parking lots of more than 25 spaces, but less than 40 spaces shall not have less than two designated spaces for handicapped parking. Proposed parking spaces are nine feet by 18 and a half feet with a 26 foot parking aisle. This is compliant with the parking table found in zoning bylaws section 88A1. Section 88B1 amount states that the development with proposed parking area of six spaces or more shall provide a minimum of 10% of landscape open space within the area designated for parking, inclusive of any landscape borders surrounding the parking lot. I'd like to ask the applicant to provide a calculation on the total percentage of the site. <clears throat> Other, currently the applicant proposes only one entrance for the future commercial uses. I would recommend including a second entrance in close proximity to the existing handicapped parking spaces. The landscaping plan is vague in terms of potential species and location of proposed shrubs and trees. I would ask the applicant provide a better determination on the location and species of the proposed landscaping. The property is within the business B zoning district, which under our zoning bylaw dimension re regulations does not require a minimum percentage of open space. The property is also proposed at the maximum percentage, 70% allowed for impervious surface within a business zone district. While the project currently proposed is compliant with those dimensional regulations, I'd recommend the applicant look into reducing imperfe impervious surface within the site. The purpose being to provide an additional open space for future residents of the development and to better meet the characteristics of the surrounding neighborhood, which is primarily within the residential B zoning district. 
believe that was all the comments we had. So on those, Mr. Chairman, um, I will work with the fire department to provide them the additional information they're looking for. On the town engineer's comment, he and I talked about that a little bit. Um, I don't think a traffic study is going to tell us anything we don't already know. Um, the reality is that this use is not going to generate a lot of traffic. ITE creates trip generation estimates for different kinds of uses, and this use, commercial and residential mixed, would generate maybe 11 trips in a peak hour in the morning. So a trip in is a trip, a trip out is a trip. So it's not 11 cars, it's less than 11 cars. And that's just not going to have any material impact on the functioning of that intersection. So the town engineer did suggest that sign, which Gerald mentioned. So that's something that you know we're amenable to installing uh, if, if that's something the board uh, thinks is appropriate. Um, <clears throat> I did have a couple, couple questions. Um, currently, are any of the units going to be available for low or moderate um, incomes? There's no plan for that at the moment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I guess, can you provide a little more clarification as far as the measurement from the entrance and exit of the property or the proposed um, plan to the actual um, intersection? Do you know what that is? Uh, I didn't bring a scale with me. It's going to be, let's see. starts to be created. And there's not <coughs> there's not a lot of backup queuing in the left turn only lane. It's, it's much more backup queuing in the straight through lane. Um, you, you know, during your peak AM hour and your peak PM hour, that's where you see the, the uh, queuing of vehicles is in that straight, looking to go straight through down 27 to the center of town. Um, would you be opposed to to having a traffic study done for the project? I mean, if the board wants it done, we'll do it. I, I just, again, it's not going to tell us anything we don't already know, you know? I hate to waste my client's money, <laughs> but it's going to tell us that there's queuing at the intersection during peak traffic hours, a.m. and p.m. It's going to tell you that this use is not generating a lot of trips in relation to the amount of traffic on Route 27. It's going to tell you that because we're not generating a lot of trips, we're not going to affect the operation of the intersection. You know, there might be a recommendation about signage, but I think that's something that, you know, we could hammer out with the town engineer, but. Yeah, I, I guess from my standpoint, when you look at the commercial use on the first floor and not really knowing exactly what could be located there, whether it was a business that had people consistently entering and or exiting the, the property, there'd be a potential that there may be more volume than what there's only 11 spaces dedicated to the commercial use. So, you know, when you take into account there's 5,000 square feet there and their employees need to park there, there's not, a lot of via, there's not a lot of spaces set aside for uses to have a lot of traffic coming and going. So prospective tenants and the owner of the property are going to recognize that and they're going to say, listen, there's not enough parking here if it's an intensive use for that. And that's why it's going to draw, you know, kind of a low intensive use like an office of some kind or a real estate office or an accountant's office Th those are really the most likely tenants if we were to do a traffic study that's what we would assume for the for the first floor is that kind of use and those are the figures that I quoted to you from ITE are for office use for the entire first floor and then 10 residential units so the 10 residential units in the peak hour generates four or five trips and an office use with 5,000 square feet generates maybe six or seven trips in the peak hour? Um, <clears throat> to steal a line from a former member, the, where's the snow going to be stored <laughs> on the property? We're going to, that's a comment that they generated, so we'll, we'll 
add some clarification on the plan for that. We obviously need to go to the planning board. The town engineer is going to generate more detailed technical comments for the planning board, so there are going to be plan revisions. So we're not going to ask you to close this tonight, obviously. We're going to ask to continue it, and we'll come back with that information clarified on the plan. Um, trash and mail for the tenants. Uh, so mail, I believe, will be interior to the building. Uh, trash, so we have in this corner here, we have a loading space. Basically a nice way to say a spot for a, a FedEx truck to park or an Amazon truck. You know, a little area here where a delivery vehicle to either the residences or the commercial spaces could park here <coughs> early. And then next to that is a small dumpster enclosure area, which will be fully screened, fully fenced. Um, as far as the topography of the property, I, I was trying to look at kind of the elevations and the way that the water flowed. You're capturing most of the water. It, I don't know if it was just the way I interpreted it, but one of the plans looked like it was almost towards the end of the parking lot, um, as though the water was being pushed out into the roadway. Is that incorrect in, in, in how I'm seeing it? No, that? so well, the, way the, the way the grading works, grading is driven primarily by the grading design. So the whole property slopes downhill towards the intersection, right? and it slopes off one, two, three, four, five, six feet. Um, what we are proposing to doing to do, basically because of the way we have to design the drainage system under the parking lot, is to level off the site. So we're basically going to be level with the high side, more or less level with the high side, and then we're going to fill on the low side, basically level off the property. We're capturing all the runoff from our roof area. And for the parking lot, everything from here back is captured and put into our underground infiltration system there. The line that you just depicted from there forward is, I guess, where I saw that runoff pitching towards the street. Is that? It's correct. Okay. It's really, it's unavoidable given the topography of the land. And, and, and I talked about this with Carl this afternoon. And he's generally satisfied with the drainage design. But that'll get flushed out at the planning board level in greater detail. OK. Um, and I noticed on one of the other plans that it didn't, it said something about a potential utility transformer on the property if needed. Is there an area that would be dedicated for that? Um, and is it going to affect any of the parking areas or? No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be in a parking area. So the power company designs, the power company, when you have to apply, actually apply for a connection in order for them to design the electrical system. So. This may just be a direct overhead wire from one of the poles out in front of the property. There might be a transformer they hang on the pole, but they most, might also have a small pad mounted generator, but it would a uh, transformer, but it would it would be located in a green space on the property somewhere. Probably on the side of the building, the right side. Sure. So are these proposed as rentals or condos? Uh, at this point, rentals. <coughs> Who would be responsible for managing the property? Well, the owner may elect to manage it themselves, or they may elect to hire a company to manage the property. I don't, I don't know that they've made that decision yet. Do you know the unit sizes yet? <coughs> two-bedroom unit. And that's <clears throat> really in the context of kind of who is the, who are the potential residents going to be. Uh, and I think what still gives me some pause is there's just not a ton of green space if we're talking families uh, that are going to be trying to live in, in that with kids. And I think it's just something to <clears throat> be concerned with, especially. I mean, it, it seems like the site's been pretty well maxed out between the, the footprint of the building and the parking. We're going to Patrick mentioned that we're going to look at some green space amenities. Unfortunately, a lot of our green space is tied up in that 26 foot buffer from the rear, which we can't really do anything about. Mm -hmm. um, if the planning board allows us to put, you know, 
I don't know, a couple of benches or something in that area, we'll, we're happy to do it. But we'll look for other opportunities on the site as well to create some creative out, outside amenity space. Yeah, sorry, I'll go ahead. Uh, this, um, I'm assuming this is appropriate, but just out of curiosity, how, how has your communication been with your direct abutters and the people in the close proximity to the potential project? Well, the applicant, the applicant spoke to the owner of the property to our left. <coughs> they didn't have any issues. Uh, I don't know if they're here tonight, I have no idea. Um, they didn't express any issues to, to the applicant. They tried to reach out to some of the people in the back, but were not able to get any of them. Sure. Um, I'm just going to go back to our section 5B136, actually II, which I already talked about. I, I guess I'm kind of stuck right there because I think our job is to make sure that or your job is to make sure that your project fits into that two times the gross area. And I, I like, I'd like a number kind of in the next few minutes. I can't believe that it's not somewhere for us. I couldn't the find The architect's it. not here with us this evening. He couldn't be here. So I don't have the clarification on that tonight. I will have it for you before the next meeting. OK, because I mean, it's nice to talk about parking. And it's nice to talk about what we've all talked about. But I, 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 I think we can't. That, that's site plan, and I know you're going to planning board, but our stick, my sticking point is, are you fitting into our bylaw? And we, Understood. I'll okay. have that clarification I guess for you that's, before the next meeting. Okay. 100%. <laughs> Any other questions or comments before we open up to the public? Is there anyone here from the public that would like to speak about this? Please step up to the podium. Sure. Provide your uh, name and address, please. Uh, Daniel Aluigi, and I'm one of the residents that lives right behind here. And um, I was never contacted once. And this is the first time I'm hearing of this, um, other than the letter that I received. So thank you very much. Um, I guess I have a lot of concerns um, being a resident. Number one, my understanding is that that's um, business and residential zoning. So there's a choice of either one or the other. That's my understanding. Um, and number two, quite honestly, as a father of three children, uh, and my children attend those, that school, uh, there's a lot of safety issues I'm very concerned about with traffic there. Uh, I see a lot of kids running for their dear lives as they're crossing the street with their backpacks. I see a lot of cars going through you know, red lights in the mornings. Um, you're adding another 10 families, uh, rentals, which you're going to have U-Haul trucks coming in and out of there. Um, I mean, there's a dumpster in the back, rodents. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things here that we need to take into, into consideration. Noise pollution, um, but most of all, I'm concerned about the congestion situation and the traffic. Um, I don't know about the 11 cars or what have you going in and out. All I know is that you're adding a lot more to the pretty congested area there uh, of turning left and people turning when they're turning down Washington and turning. I see people turning very quickly while people will be trying to pull out. So there's a lot of things that we, I, I would request if we could have a traffic, um, you know, monitoring there just to see a little bit more as to what is going to happen. Um, and that's, that's about it for me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'll just note that it is business zoned. It's not zoned residential. Really the only residential opportunity in the business zone is what we're proposing, which is a mixed use. Hi, my name's Donna Jim Petro. I live at Three Holland Way, so I'm right um, across from the Aloigis. You know, when they decide, when they made this, I've been a Walpole resident all of my life, and I lived right at that intersection, um, pre-married, and then after I got married on the other side of the town, on the other side of that intersection. And I've seen the traffic 
grow. We all have seen the traffic grow. When they made that, when they, and that's always been zoned for business. I get that. But that was 50 plus years ago. I mean, you guys could probably tell me how long ago that was zoned as business. In that 50 some years, the traffic was, is never, we never thought it would be anywhere as near it is. The running, the ambulances running to Newark Hospital. The, you know, the kids going down to ride their bikes all the time, all summer long, after school, <coughs> riding their bikes home or to the good food store for a snack. I mean, we've seen an, an incredible amount of traffic. Um, that has grown and now we're looking at the middle school being built and we're looking at that traffic and I, I myself ride my bicycle up that road just to let you know so if a car is coming out we all know that if you look into the left because you've got a very short distance here that's a we know it's a double yellow line you can't go, you know it's tough to go left and it's right there to get in the left so you have to cut across two lanes to get to where you want to be when you're riding your bike and somebody comes out and they see quickly, no traffic, they're not looking at you. They're looking to scoot out quick, quickly. So what I see as a nurse um, and a concerned you know, citizen, I see that we are gonna have loss of life. We know that that's a million dollar stoplight, right? The Andersons made a billion dollars on that, right? Because of all the accidents at that, at that traffic light. And if we think it's gonna get anywhere better, because we add so much more traffic. And to your point, I want to say I congratulate you saying, we don't, you can't even make a claim that there's not going to be you know, very much more traffic. We don't know what the business is, to your point. So you can't make a claim. It's, only, you know, it's not going to be very much 11 stops in and out. It, we don't know that. So it's a concerned you know, uh, thing. I think we really need to like, really review this. I wish that we had made that not business years ago. I don't know how you can do that. But that was made originally many, many years ago long before. I can tell you that I, for me to go to preschool, because I take that turn, for me to drop off my grandkids to preschool, I can't get out of my street on Holland Way. Not two, three, sometimes four lights before I can get out of my street. And I'm not even going that way, I'm going to the other way. So the tra and when I go to take the train to go to work, the, you can't get out of that. So now we're gonna add on more people that are going to work. I think we really need to, re I think the town really needs to rethink um, allowing this to happen. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Edward Lazi and I live the Coles Street. So my biggest concern is uh, the other, the traffic and also the safety. I have two girls, and kind of almost every night or almost every day, the police stops cars in front of my house. Because what happens? All these guys that come this way, they rush when it is orange car. So imagine now they are going to rush and someone goes out this way. It's going to be an accident, they're going to go and hit my home there. So, And this, if it's going to be a 7 Eleven there, I know it's going to any other store, the traffic is going to be crazy. On top of that, we are going to have a new middle school. At all, instead of two middle schools, we're going to have one there. So now the traffic is going to increase on top of that. Another concern is that the, from architect, architecture perspective, high plan doesn't have any three-store building. All are two stores. Now we're suggesting, okay, let's make it three stores. So what's going to be next? Four stores building that? Doesn't make any sense. As I mentioned, safety concern. Everyone is going to be a rental there. We all own our houses there for a very long period of time. The engineer mentioned that these guys have been asked. Yeah, that might be true, but these guys bought this house two months ago. You can take a look online. The rest of us have been lived here for eight, nine plus years, maybe 50 years or so. And I don't know how this can be a business property when is all single houses there. So it's safety concern. We don't know who's going to come to rent those houses. Also for safety of the people who's going to live there. There is no place for the kids. If there are going to be 20 units, if there are 10 kids, <coughs> when they are going to play? On the parking lot? Look, grab the bicycle, go outside, someone is going to hit them. We're going to see a, a tragic accident. But you can check with the police almost every night, almost every day, police stops cars in front of this area. In front of my house every night, I see police lights because they are stopping people that are <coughs> passing the traffic light with the orange. Now imagine now with 
this x is here, plus the p will come, will be zero, will come to this side, they still have to pass the double line here. Every morning, you can notice there, you have to stay for 20 minutes in the traffic just to bring your kids to school or drop it off or pick it up. So this is my concern, so. My suggestion for these guys, they can build two single houses there or two condos, so they got a good deal from that property, but we don't need 20 rentals there, plus a 7-Eleven that might put the traffic <coughs> in the room, so. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Luba Seneco, and I live the first house on Washington Street, but my sister lives right across. She's right there. And uh, so we have little children. We bring them to school. The bus stops right exactly in front of the house that they're trying to build. So right now, even if I go to visit my sister, I cannot get out from her parking lot. I really, there are multiple times uh, I have to wait for the light to change. So there is that, uh, Interception is very like dangerous, technically. I constantly see people because there is a middle school, kids walking, and it's very difficult. As everybody keeps saying, it's a, most important, it's a safety issue. I understand for everybody, and to build this kind of big house, I understand it's a property, something has to be built, but I mean, just a residential house, that's understandable, but to build a three-story house, with the, there is like a no space for parking, no space with the light and everything else, because that that would not that's very dangerous. Primarily, it's a safety issue, and I see the kids walking on the opposite direction. The store bus stops. So I really don't understand how this property can be built there. Thank you. Thank you. John O'Leary, 776 Washington Street. I live down Washington Street about a quarter mile from the intersection, High Plain in Washington. Um, just a few points I wanted to bring up. Um, I've lived in Walpole and in that neighborhood my entire life, basically. So I've walked to what was East Junior High, now Bird Middle School, and Old Post Road School. So walking past through that intersection occurs for school kids every day. So that's an issue that needs to be addressed when you're thinking about traffic studies. Um, is the parking for designated for the residents going to be labeled so that it's clearly marked so that customers come <coughs> to will be able to avoid it? Through you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. You can answer that here. Uh, it's an operational question. I don't, we haven't really flushed that out yet. Okay. Certainly something that could be done. Um, I believe the left turn issue out of the, their parking lot is something that needs to be considered. Um, I come through that intersection basically on a daily basis. I use the left hand turn lane to cut that coming down High Plain and taking a left on Washington. So I know the traffic isn't quite as thick on that lane as the one coming straight through town, but it does get used on a regular basis. Um, also, as someone who's driven through there in the mornings, as you turn up High Plain Street at the wrong time of day, all you see is glare. The sun is right in your eyes, so that is a consideration potentially that must be looked at. Um, I don't know how old the water lines are in that area, whether that's something water and sewer might want to address, um, the added uh, influx of liquids in through and out, maybe something that needs to be addressed before building begins. Um, school parking. Um, the, as he's mentioned, 
the as you face this lot, the building, the lot on the left is just thin, and it is zoned building uh, business. So we don't know what may happen along the line for that. So it's possible incorporation into this lot is something that might be thought uh, also. Um, <coughs> the apartments are also zoned business, but the apartments are basically a residential use. So even though a um, buffer zone isn't necessarily required, some kind of uh, mitigation might be needed to protect what was is basically a residential use from a new use, even though it is in fact partly residential itself. Um, also, I'd like to mention to the public, anyone who has con concerns or anything, please feel free to come to the planning board meeting when it comes before us in a couple of weeks, I think. So if you keep an eye out for that, those will be the planning board meets on Thursday nights. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tara Wallace and I live Seven hundred two Washington Street, Thanks. and my concern uh, is partly the lack of detail that we're getting in terms of business and who's going to be running the uh, property, um, that kind of thing. But mainly, that's the side work is on the, the side for the kids to walk to school. That's a walk, you know, the kids walk to school from there, and that's. You're t talking about potentially 31 cars coming in and out, plus FedEx trucks, Amazon trucks, all of that coming in and out of that property. I don't know what the landscaping is going to be, but you're talking about a dangerous situation for all those kids walking to the middle school. That's there. There's no sidewalk on the other side. So that's, that's it. Tony, I live at 199 High Plain Street. Um, I grew up on Old Post Road, so I've lived here my whole life. And I have to say, I'm sure when we built our development 28 years ago, uh, Victoria Circle and I had on High Plain Street, the neighbors around the area were not happy about it at the time either, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, I'm all for forward thinking. I understand something has to be put on that property because it's an eyesore now and something's going to go there. Uh, but I'm really not sure that 10 more family homes or family families, I suppose, could be stuck into that small space. The man um, mentioned there's no place for the kids to play. <coughs> you have 10 families going there. I don't know what kind of rent you'll be looking for or what kind of families will be going there, but it's potentially 10 more families with kids, you know, that are going to be running around and with no place to run with the intersection there. So the safety is a concern as well. Um, personally, I'd like to see something else go there, like maybe a couple of condexes or something, but I don't know if that's considered a business use as well, but um, I don't know, just thought I'd give you my two cents. Thank you. Yo. I live right across the street, 174 High Plain Street. And when you say uh, peak time, I don't know, is the time like 3 o'clock? Because I live there, I see all day traffic starts at 3 o'clock, huge, heavy traffic. So you cannot uh, turn. And I see my neighbor who lived across the street, how, she, how long she, it took her to turn left. So if you add in that many apartments there, and you say like how many cars in and out, and the traffic is so heavy there. Then uh, we have kids, middle school, walking across the street with that traffic, and then they gonna use the sidewalk near that big, huge building, right? It's a big, as a nurse, I think it's a huge, huge uh, safety concern for the kids. Um, uh, school bus, my kids taking the school bus to Old Paul School, they have to take the bus. We cross in the street, 
You don't, do you know how many times the car just like rushing through, even <coughs> this, the school bus standing there? Huge safety concern, huge. Thank you. Thank you. And another thing, nobody asked us, like, you know, like, I see like a lot of people just coming in, yeah, nobody contacted us either, and mm -hmm. they just across the street. Uh, just a few concluding thoughts. Uh, I'm basically going to circle back to where we started, which is this is a business zone, you know, and the owner of the property has the right to develop it consistent with the zoning bylaw. And this really is a choice between a mixed use project or a 100% commercial project. And the 100% commercial project is allowed by right, it doesn't require a permit from this board. We think the mixed use is the right use for this site, and we hope the board will agree. Um, but uh, at this point, as I mentioned, we do need to uh, get in front of the planning board, so we would like to continue for a month. But if there's any anything else you want to discuss with us right now, happy to do that. I, I just, you know, and this, this point has definitely been touched on, but I, I just want to provide a little more context for it as it relates to traffic and or traffic study. It is important to note that not only are we building a new middle school, we're combining our middle schools. So it's safe to assume that the traffic related to the current middle school is going to double. <coughs> so whatever the current traffic is now is going to be significantly more when that's done. I mean, yes, that's a fact. <coughs> I live right down the street, so <laughs> I'm very familiar with the area. So you know. I know. I drive through this intersection all the time. Uh, I'd like to see a traffic study personally. I think it, it's important to not only reassure the board of, of the numbers and the, the current situation, but um, it sounds like a lot of the concerns of the abutters would be answered as well. Um, All right, let me look into that. Okay. And as far as uh, other items you were going to take care of is submitting a revised set of plans with the common names is that yeah so yeah we'll correct the architectural plans we'll provide you with uh, a breakdown of the residential floor area versus the commercial floor <coughs> area uh, we're gonna have a revised site plan that is generated through comments from the planning board which we won't get for another couple of weeks so when we get that squared away we'll we submit a revised site plan to you I think if we came back in a month uh, you know we'd have something to talk about it not in two weeks the, also, you're going to follow up with the fire department turning radius, yeah. um, snow storage. Um, All the comments that have been generated, we will we will respond to in writing. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. Sorry, just one more thing. Uh, you had also previously mentioned because I had asked it, how your butter communication had gone, and you had mentioned that you had reached out to no avail. I, I would say that they're all here. Hopefully, you took good notes and could continue conversations with them around the project and yeah, the applicants here so if any yeah. of the neighbors want to talk to us yep. um, I just we'll be free after the meeting <laughs> perfect I think I another question? yeah you guys stand up to the podium please and identify yourself <clears throat> because the gentleman mentioned that because this is a business residential for the reason is asking for permission but he said that if this business only doesn't need your permission so what are the procedures in this business zone? They can give whatever they want without asking the neighbors? It's zoned for business, which they could. I can explain that. Yeah, so <laughs> there's, there's two different things that, that are happening under our proposal. One is a site plan review by the planning board, which is very different than a special permit. The zoning board, we're in front of them for a special permit to include the two stories of residential. Site plan review is an administrative review process that w happens whether it's all commercial or a mixed use. So if it goes mixed use like we'd like it to do, it's a permit from the zoning board and a site plan review from the planning board. If it's 100% commercial allowed by right, it is only site plan review by the planning board. But we as the neighbors, do we have a say on that one? There'll be a public hearing for that. Okay. You will all have gotten a notice in the mail, I believe, already for that, for that meeting, planning board meeting. I just wanted to make sure that kind of even if you go 100% business, at least we are going to be included on the conversation. 
absolutely. Yeah, the planning board process is a public hearing just like this. It's just a, it's a different uh, permitting scenario. Yes. Uh, the only other two comments I had was just to see if we can get a comment from the water and sewer and um, the police department. I'll reach out to them again. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I spoke to Carl already about water and sewer, so he's going to generate some comments about the water and sewer. The current, current for the planning board. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's two big water mains in front of the property, so okay. plenty of water there. Do so we have a date available to continue this? So if the applicant is considering a month out, uh, literally a month, uh, March 2nd <laughs> would be our, uh, our first meeting uh, scheduled for the month of March. Um, there's also March 16th, so I'd prefer the second. Second. Do you have anything else on? The second, we do have a separate public hearing for Doopy Street remand. So, and I have an application coming in tomorrow. Yeah, if you want to go that day or the. It second. would be great to put them both on the same day. Yeah. What time? Seven. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think I do have the, um, we just submitted the public hearing notice for Doopy Street at 7, um, provided how you wish to go forward with that, or how, how the board wishes to go forward. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's been our practice to kind of identify specific yeah, times for specific, it's, show it's just 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Good enough. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just thought I'd, I'd want to say this now because I don't know how many other neighbors will um, be here for the follow-up, but if you look at what our, um, the purpose of our zoning bylaws are for um, in our section one, two, um, the zoning bylaws were put out in place to promote public health and safety. From what I'm hearing, and I know that's probably not in our sandbox right now, but I'm hearing a lot of concerns about safety, okay? Other terms are to include to lessen congestion on our streets. It's right here in our purpose. And to prevent overcrowding of land. Now, I understand a, an owner can do anything they want with their land, especially if it's as a matter of, a right, uh, of right as this project is. However, two stories and 10 units, <coughs> 10 two bedroom units is, is extremely, in my opinion, dense. And I would hope or I would wish that the applicant would consider a less dense project allowed with the commercial use on the first floor, but perhaps consider um, a second floor of residential. And the chairman asked about affordable units, and the, the flat out answer was not, not being considered, but that's also in our fine print that we should encourage housing for persons of, of, the, of the town of all income levels. So that's not being considered and it's not, you know, it's not our enforcement to do that, but it would have been nice to have someone come in and say, as the chairman asked, do you have any plans to include um, any affordable units? Um, but that being said, I think it's a very intense use of a 28,000 square foot parcel zone business allowed by right but that doesn't mean you have to <coughs> overfill the sandbox. And I, I really think 10 units, no play areas. Again, that site plan, you do what you want with that with the planning board. But all the concerns we had here tonight were of safety, safety and denseness. And a little bit out of the character of the neighborhood to have, yes, it's not quite as high as a garrison colonial, but it's three, it's still three stories. And it's gonna look like three stories in a, in a neighborhood with the people across the street nice garrison colonials, the um, Holland Way behind it, you know, 1950s, you know, well-kept bungalows and all kinds of things. It just doesn't seem to fit the character of the neighborhood. Three stories are allowed. In the I, I understand they're allowed, Mr. American. The applicant went to great extents to uh, minimize the massing of the structure. So we will continue this hearing till March 2nd at 7 p.m. at the town hall. Um, so moved. Second. Who's voting? Who's voting? 
if the Mullen rule for either you one. You can of identify the voting members for this purpose. Okay, yep. voting on this continuance will be Mark and Tim, uh, along with the uh, regular members, Dave and Bob and myself, to continue the hearing. Uh, it's been uh, seconded, and all those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks for your time. We Thank appreciate you very it. Much. Uh, we have some meeting meeting minutes to review. Um, <coughs> minutes from January nineteenth. Anyone have any comments? Excuse me, can you step outside just before you talk? We're still in session right now. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from January 19th, 2020? So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 we have is from the executive session January 5th we yeah so usually for executive session minutes how you discuss those um, it, it can be pertinent depending if the information that's currently discussed is within litigation sorry I can't hear you Pat sorry. so usually when you discuss executive session minutes you can either vote to improve them within the executive session if it's pertinent to ongoing litigation or you can address them um, at, 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 as such within current session. However, due to the fact that these executive session minutes refer to a public hearing that has already been scheduled, so the results of the public executive session dealt with um, discussion of Doopy Street, and we had um, had a conclusion during that executive session. I don't, I don't think it's a matter of um, a concern of the board discussing and voting them tonight. The board wished to, was, wished, wished to withhold them until after the conclusion of the remand hearing. That's. Um, it's certainly up to the board, but discussion to vote on tonight is, is more than fine. You don't have to be in executive session to vote on them. Do anyone have any comments regarding the meeting minutes of January 5th? I did have a, just a couple of comments. Yep. Um, on the second page, um, a little more than halfway down, uh, the paragraph starts, Mr. Anderson. Yes. And the third line uh, being that it is root, uh, I think, 27. Yep. Uh, and two paragraphs down from that uh, should be uh, Ms. Coffee. Yes. And on the top of the third page, uh, Mr. Anderson stated, uh, I think, uh, yeah. just strike he. And then on the two motions, we have uh, votes recorded as 600. Um, oh, that's correct. Okay. Yep. And I believe there's only five voting members. Um, yep. So there should be 500. Zero, zero. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess you'd have to maybe look, yeah, at, no, look you're, at you're right. I, I would remove, um, yes. Yeah. See which member should be taken off. It would be the associate. Okay. Yep. Make those adjustments. Um, move to uh, take a vote on that. Is it worth reading? Do we, hmm? what do you think? 
No, it's a, I guess you would take a motion to approve as amended. Yep. As Similar amended. as any other minutes. Okay. Motion to approve as amended. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, Opposed. Abstain. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.